Welcome back. Nearly 17,000 will be diagnosed with esophageal cancer in 2015. April is all about awareness. And join me live is Dr. Antion, board certified gastroenterologist with Spectrum Health Medical Group. Good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, and we talk about the esophagus, but once again, point out to people what area of your body we're talking about. We're talking about a tube that connects basically the back of your mouth with your stomach. That's what we're talking about. And we, uh, we see that the cancer in this area is on, on the rise? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, when you compare the incidence of esophageal cancer with any other type of cancer in the United States, this is the one that is occurring or growing the fastest, let's say. So it's a big problem we have. And what is the number one risk factor in all of this? The main risk factor is what we call Barrett's esophagus. Mm -hmm. Barrett's esophagus is an abnormal lining of the mucosa of the esophagus. And basically what is happening is that as a result of chronic inflammation of the esophagus, mm -hmm. the lining of the esophagus changes from normal esophageal lining to an intestinal kind of lining okay. and the problem is the following the problem is that this is a pre malignant lesion so that means it can result in cancer and um, maybe so, is this somebody who typically has uh, maybe acid reflux sort of symptoms are they the ones you really want to pay particular attention to absolutely mm -hmm. Th that's exactly the group that we need to be trying to uh, perform endoscopies on so we can detect these lesions mm -hmm. at an earlier stage because the earlier you detect the, the cancer, if there is one, the better the results are with therapy. And some people might live on Tums and Rolaids to calm things yes. down, but what are the signs and symptoms that things have actually progressed and they really need to take some serious attention to this? You know, if you're having a um, heartburn more than twice a, a week, mm -hmm. if you are having, for example, difficulty swallowing or painful swallowing, those are things that should trigger your your um, initiation to go and seek medical advice and have an endoscopy. Mm -hmm. And will they notice a sort of a hoarseness maybe more often, a cough? Those are symptoms of what we call um, gastroesophageal reflux disease, mm -hmm. meaning the acid that we talk about that comes from the stomach that irritates the esophagus. By doing that, sometimes it goes into your lungs and that produces the cough, the chronic cough that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is exactly the same reason that changes the lining of the mucosa uh, and, and, and becomes a precancerous lesion. Sure, okay, so people think, all right, I need to get this checked out, so what's the procedure? I've had an endoscopy done. Yeah, right. um, I was, I was put under, so I don't even remember it, but after, afterwards, it didn't seem to bother me one bit. But walk us through the procedure a little bit, sure. if you could. Sure. It's, it's a very, uh, um, very simple procedure, let's say. Uh, the patient is completely sleeping. So, you know, you, 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 they, we give you medications to make you sleepy, and then we introduce a, a tube that, like the um, uh, picture is showing mm -hmm. uh, through the back of the mouth and then we go into the esophagus, then we go into the stomach and we actually go into the first part of the small bowel that we call it duodenum mm -hmm. and that, that endoscope not only allows to see the area but it also allows to obtain sampling mm -hmm. and it is that sampling that will tell us if a person has Barrett's esophagus or even mm -hmm. cancer. What is it that we're seeing here? Is this, is this a procedure that you've actually done? Yes, okay. this is what we call the endoscopic submucosal dissection. This is a procedure that is very new in the United States, but this has been done in Japan for more than 10 years, 15 years. And the, the great thing about endoscopic submucosal dissection is that, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm re removing an early cancer using a modified needle knife, mm -hmm. uh, meaning a, a needle that cuts like a knife. Okay. I just take the cancer out. I do not take the entire esophagus out. So like surgery, endoscopic submucosal dissection allows us to remove the entire cancer. Mm -hmm. Like surgery, it allows us to send that specimen, the entire tumor, to our pathologist so they do a very detailed evaluation of the cancer and tell us how deeply it goes and all that. Mm -hmm. And But unlike cancer, 
This is a pa these are patients who go back to normal next day. That's what, that was my next question. What's the recovery like for them after that? Just after 20, we, I admit them for 23 hour observation. Mm -hmm. And they go back to normal life the next day, basically. Wow. All right. So to prevent stomach acid and those sort of things, I know fried foods is one thing that sets me off. So I try to avoid fried foods. But what other things can we do lifestyle-wise to really to change that? You know, one, one of the things is we know that caffeine products, mm -hmm. chocolate, you know, we, we all love, Our right? Chocolate, yeah. <laughs> well, it has its consequences, sure, right? Sure. One of them is, yes. is more production of acid. The other thing also, the, um, the uh, eating and going to bed immediately mm -hmm. is a bad idea yeah. because you know you have the contents in the stomach, you have more production of acid, mm -hmm. and you are in a, in, a, in a horizontal position that will reflux more into your esophagus and produce problems long term. So maybe put a couple extra pillows underneath that if you would happen be good. to have a... Yeah. The best thing to do actually is leave at least three hours uh, before you go to bed. I think that's the best thing you can do. All right, All some right. great advice. All right, Thank you heartburn so much. is not fun. It is not fun. But uh, if you want to go ahead and check out more or to reach out to them, go ahead and give them a call at 616 267 7414. And they're located at 4100 Lake Drive, Southeast Suite 205. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you so much. Great Appreciate advice. it. Absolutely. Thank you.